Welcome to uh, week one of Western Civilization uh, 104. And uh, I just want to say that I, I find this to be a very interesting class, exciting, very important for understanding the foundations of the very civilization that we live in. Um, the very uh, act of going to college in the manner in which we are doing it is rooted in Western civilization. Uh, now, this is not to say that other nations did not have <coughs> um, places of learning, <coughs> excuse me, but certainly the way that it's structured um, is modeled on uh, uh, history coming out of uh, the Western legacy. The very language that I'm speaking to you in is a Germanic tongue. And it is, that means it's related to German. Um, uh, our old English, uh, the Anglo-Saxon tongue, actually, you cannot understand now without taking a, a, a class on it. Um, our language has evolved quite a bit. You look at Shakespeare, that's more or less new English. Um, and still very difficult for us to understand. Um, again, yes, it's, it's a dramatic language. Uh, our political institutions and our um, uh, the academic institutions to say that you're taking history that's a greek word okay uh for investigation or discovering um if you take biology vios means life study of life a psychology psyche or suke uh the study of the self um theology theos is god uh, 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 Greek and then we have many Latin words of course which leads me to a point that Greek and Latin is considered part of the foundations of Western civilization but also those that's Mediterranean that's the Mediterranean world and by extension the Mediterranean world was influenced also by Africa and um, the Middle East so we start off Western civilization in a place that many of you are not going to be um, expecting it to start and um, one of the things that uh, I, I mean so basically my Western Civ class starts off very similar in many ways to my world uh, uh, civilization um, class and um, I think this is very important to this little shocker or something that you uh, may not be aware of is going to be important for you to know I also want to say something about the very term West okay um, West is relative to what? I mean, you have to have a marker and say, okay, there's to the west of me is this, to the east of me is that. But if you move around a bit, that, that can change. I mean, so here's an example. Morocco in Arabic is uh, called Al Maghreb, means the west in Arabic. We don't think of Morocco as being the west. But if you were in a, a Middle Eastern country, what we call the Middle East, see, East, or sometimes it's called Near East, Morocco would be west of that. Um, so it's interesting. And, and, and then here's the other side of this. You know, Australia, New Zealand, the United States and Canada, um, to a certain extent, even much of Latin, uh, South America, Central and South America, are byproducts of Western civilization, but they are not located in what we would think of as the West. In other words, we're, we're, we're descendants of colonization, um, actually violent colonization in many cases. Um, South Afrikaners, white South Africans, and uh, white Kenyans living in Africa are coming from Western cultures, creating Western institutions in many cases, but are actually not located in the West. And this leads us to another important discussion, is what Western civilization means to the rest of the world. And this, uh, this has become quite controversial uh, um, nowadays. Maybe it's always been controversial. I mean, in the past, this class would have been taught as basically the West is the best. There was this celebration that Western culture, this is something that you, you, t you teach this in the context of of really talking about the advancement of this amazing civilization that, that kind of marginalizes the rest of the world. Keep in mind that Britain saw itself as one of the, the, the great leaders of the light of Western 
democracy uh, uh, of a Western system. Not so much the democracy part, but that's, a, that's another topic. But but Western civilization and even you know superior Christianity to the rest of the world. There's a lot of different views on how this was, but ultimately it was about su supremacy. If you think about this, okay, we live in the United States. And we did not finalize, the United States did not finalize getting all the territory on the continent that it has until the mid-19th century, essentially, okay, in the 1800s. This is, we're a very recent country. Now, how did we get this? We got this through war and taking land from indigenous peoples, and then later we actually started the war with Mexico. Here's my whole point. We had to feel that we were better, meaning we, meaning the the colonists and the Western institution, uh, the, the nation that we have, to justify taking, expanding West in terms of the, the geography of, of the wild, wild West, you know, uh, uh, in the United States, we had to think and assume that we were a superior people that had a right based on strength, as opposed to the people who were actually living here. Um, and this is the, this narrative or this discussion is causing a lot of grief and kind of chaos in identity that the West has, and, and, and particularly the United States, but not just the United States. Um, so you, you look at w the, the turmoil going on in the Western world and, and the debate about what it means to be a part of Western civilization, and now what does it mean when so many people living from countries that are not Western, and actually that often uh, had a lot of negative things happen to them as a result of Western civilization, and now don't feel that they're being treated fairly in those countries, and yet are, are citizens. They are members of the, of the West. So for example, the, uh, the French colonized Africa and many Arab uh, uh, countries and brought in a bunch of Arab uh, 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 Algerian immigrants, for example, and don't want to hire them for jobs, and yet they brought them over, and now there's this kind of there's this ra racial tension, ethnic uh, tension, tension about religion, uh, Britain did the same thing with many coming from India and some of their former colonies. And so what we're having is this major rise, uh, and, and, then, and then to talk about the refugee crisis, which, which has, has taken place. So um, there is a rise of right-wing nationalism, ultra-nationalism, even Nazism, not just even this being caught up in America, but, but, but in Europe, and a debate about like what it means be a part of Western civilization. Now, what I'm hoping that this can help inform you with, because we really talked about the foundations, we're not going into that so much. We're really kind of talking about more of the pre-modern world issues that I cover in my 105. But this should still help you kind of get a foundation to think about what, you know, what to make of the civilization that we are a part of, whether we wanted to be a part of this or not whether we think it's the greatest thing or we don't. So this will help you get an informed idea. For me, what I try to do is really create a nuance. I actually like uh, a lot of, of things coming out of Western civilization. I am a descendant of Europeans mainly. I don't know of any, there's no other traces of, of, of the different ethnicities. Now my daughter, her mother, my ex-wife, is Filipino and Haitian. So my daughter carries the DNA of those from Haiti and Manila Philippines, uh, from the Philippines. And so now we're, we're having this interesting thing, right, where, where more and more people are actually uh, having run through their veins, perhaps ancestors that go back to wearing kilts in Scotland, in the Highlands, or fighting, you know, in the Lowlands, and simultaneously having ancestors that you can trace somewhere in West Africa or in the Caribbean. And um, you have more and more of people sharing more of the global legacy within their own DNA and um, being exposed maybe to various you know, cultures uh, on top of that. And so then again, that also morphs the way that people think about the civilization that we live in. So I'm inviting you to come in and, and really participate in, in, in this discussion and to reflect and think about you know, what this means. Um, 
I uh, um, the last thing I want to say is 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 uh, I have been a single dad for most of my adult life. My daughter's 19 now. She might be moving out soon. But I get what it's like to be a parent. I also work another job. So if you have any issues, you need to contact me right away. But I can't have you not showing up and then tell me that you had a problem like two weeks later. I need you to be in contact with me. And it, um, you know, I want to help support you, but you got to be communicating with me, okay? So just keep that in mind. And on the chats, on the discussions, always keep them civil and um, respectable to each other. I believe in free speech, but also I believe in decorum and respectability. So I, I'm always trying to balance that out of allowing people to say what they want and simultaneously uh, make people feel like they're not going to be attacked on a personal level or be exposed to things that would be just offensive. Um, and so um, I try to monitor that. It's not generally a problem I have, and especially with this class in particular, but I'm just letting you know that I pay attention to these things, and I will write to you if there's anything that I, I, I'm seeing take place like that. Um, okay, so welcome to this class, and I look forward to um, joining you in these discussions and, and seeing what you have to say in, in the writings.